Good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, our latest uh, ESCI STARS webinar. Uh, the topic is uh, simulation suites used in rail systems design activities. Uh, you await uh, two uh, interesting presentations uh, on that uh, very important topic. My name is Fritz Hübner from the Cluster Transport Mobility and Logistics in Berlin Brandenburg, one of the members of the European Railway Clusters Initiative. Uh, ERCI and the European Railway Clusters Initiative uh, is founded in 2010 and nowadays is a legal entity based in Brussels. It contains for the moment 15 railway clusters which are covering 16 European countries and over 2,000 companies uh, of which uh, the majority are small and medium-sized enterprises but also uh, the research community is with us and for sure we have also contact with, uh, to uh, uh, large industries, to uh, OEMs, and so on. Yeah, what uh, about the services uh, of ERCI? Uh, first, it, it is to support uh, especially small, medium-sized enterprises uh, in getting uh, international uh, visible, uh, uh, getting more visibility on international level, uh, to uh, find new uh, market opportunities, to find new uh, research and development uh, industry uh, uh, opportunities. So uh, these are uh, the main uh, uh, goal of ERCI. And we have some instruments. Uh, we uh, uh, enlarge uh, the visibility by uh, 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 trying them to get them into uh, research and development activities on European level. We have our annual ERCI Innovation Awards. Uh, we have uh, uh, work on several uh, innovative topics uh, due to our task forces like cybersecurity, multimodal logistics, uh, green and sustainable mobility. These are uh, the task forces uh, that are already uh, uh, working. Uh, two others are in planning about norming and standardization of human factors. Then, uh, for sure, we uh, enlarge the visibility by uh, giving especially small, medium-sized enterprises the opportunity to uh, to uh, introduce uh, their innovative uh, concepts uh, due to bilateral workshops and webinars like the webinar today. Uh, for sure, we are also visible uh, in the internet and on social media. Uh, please uh, follow uh, our our uh, our uh, links. And uh, for sure, the presentation that is uh, the most popular question will be available also uh, after the webinar, so that then you could uh, take your time to test uh, the QR codes and the links. Uh, most of the ERCI uh, clusters are also part of the STARS project. Uh, it is on uh, supporting European small and medium-sized enterprises uh, in successfully adopting advanced technologies to boost their products, services, manufacturing processes in organization. First step of the STARS project is and was uh, uh, a survey uh, to uh, get an idea how digital mature are European SMEs in order to apply advanced technologies uh, in their processes. And uh, it's uh, never too late to participate in this survey. Uh, you could, could do so by, uh, by clicking at the STARS Europe, uh, at the STARS website project website, uh, then uh, you will find uh, uh, this uh, EU survey questionnaire and uh, could uh, answer uh, these uh, questions. Yeah, uh, within the STARS project, uh, eight uh, innovation trends uh, which are driving the development of products and services in the race sector until uh, 2030 have been identified. And uh, the major task uh, of the STARS project is yeah, how to tackle these innovation trends with the help of advanced technologies, especially by small, medium-sized enterprises. And in the cloud, you see uh, some uh, uh, keywords uh, on advanced technologies in total. And there are 16 uh, we are dealing with, uh, coming from blockchain, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, cybersecurity, Internet of Things, connectivity, and so on. So uh, the uh, the uh, model, supporting model of the STARS project is uh, coming uh, from the survey, from the results of the survey. Uh, we uh, have uh, 10 cluster managing uh, organizations uh, here uh, in this project, which have 
their own members are interested to work in in the stars uh, uh, with stars project to getting support from the stars project uh, that means uh, first it is a uh, yeah a regional wrap up uh, the second phase would be the uh, building of international strategic alliances of small medium sized enterprises led by some technology centers which are also part of the stars project and uh, for sure support further supported by the uh, regional cluster management organizations uh, in order to uh, uh, define uh, uh, the real problems, uh, use cases, uh, where uh, the possibility is to adopt uh, advanced technologies, uh, define challenges uh, to be solved uh, in, in, in a way, and uh, to solve challenges, uh, there's a third uh, instrument, the so-called hack and match events. Uh, that means there is a possibility that uh, the uh, more traditional, small, medium-sized uh, enterprises will be in contact to more tech-savvy uh, organizations, could be enterprises, could, uh, could be startups, could could be uh, research organizations uh, in order to elaborate uh, some uh, solutions uh, on the uh, addressed uh, challenges. And uh, within the STARS project, simply to say, uh, the small, medium-sized enterprises could receive uh, uh, business support as well as technical assistance. So uh, we are now in the phase of uh, establishing the third uh, hack and match event. And uh, it uh, will be uh, on a special topic. Uh, uh, we uh, will address the advanced technology of blockchain uh, for railway processes, products, and services. Will take place from 12 to 14th of uh, April. Uh, and uh, uh, at first, uh, there will be a, a, a call of a call for challenges. Uh, after the call for challenges, uh, maybe uh, will start uh, in the next few days. Uh, then uh, will be a call of uh, for solutions, uh, which will uh, start approximately two weeks later, uh, and then uh, uh, there will be the uh, teams which are competing uh, to each other uh, in elaborating uh, solutions uh, from the addressed uh, uh, challenges. Uh, you could uh, keep informed uh, by a. Uh, Via regularly visiting uh, ESCI stars webinars, as well uh, by uh, uh, following, uh, for instance, uh, the uh, uh, project website or the uh, B2B matchmaking website, uh, especially established uh, for the stars project. Uh, this is uh, the SARS project and uh, the uh, B2B matchmaking website where you will have the possibility uh, to register, uh, to find uh, new uh, partners. You could uh, arrange uh, B2B meetings there on, on a virtual basis. And uh, we have defined uh, uh, some certain time slots uh, after each ESCI webinar and also uh, uh, today between uh, 11.30 and uh, uh, 17 uh, uh, Central European time, uh, you will have uh, the possibility to arrange uh, certain B2B meetings. Uh, the, uh, uh, you have uh, a precondition for sure. You have to register to this uh, stars Europe dot uh, B2B match dot IO uh, web page. Uh, but do not afraid, it is free of charge. Uh, you can set up a small profile. You can also define some product services uh, where, where uh, uh, you give the other participants a, a first idea on what you could deliver. Uh, maybe also uh, you can also define what you need and uh, hopefully uh, uh, you will find uh, uh, a good, uh, a good uh, uh, date uh, 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 or uh, where you could uh, discuss uh, your 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 demands, your needs, your solutions, and so on. Yeah, stars uh, hack and match events are open for traditional oriented SMEs, for tech savvy SMEs, for academia, research uh, community, uh, for the large uh, industry, and for sure also for the stakeholders of the railway and multimodality sector. Yeah, here uh, are the latest information uh, and the update of the third uh, hack and match event uh, will be taken within the next days, uh, also on this web website as well as uh, uh, on the pro project website. Yeah, the main benefits uh, for uh, for uh, taking part in SARS hack and match events is meet 
partners and uh, customers, uh, discover new products and services, uh, prepare uh, purchases or projects, maybe meet new suppliers and get information uh, on the latest trends. And uh, yeah, uh, one step ahead, uh, uh, you could uh, you could uh, you could uh, 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 inform by yourself uh, on uh, the latest trends and uh, the, uh, the possibility uh, to improve your processes, products, uh, and so on. So don't be shy if you are interested. Uh, if you are a small medium sized enterprise and interested in in, in, in uh, adopting advanced technologies, you could uh, really set. Uh, positive uh, benefit uh, from the SARS project. So we are starting with our first presentation, and uh, it's uh, it's an, uh, a, a pleasure for me to introduce to you uh, Professor Dr. Mehmet Turan Zöllermetz. Uh, he is a general manager uh, at the Heisen Technology Engineering Limited Co., uh, a member of uh, the Anatolian Rail uh, Transportation Systems Cluster, and he already uh, uh, shared his screen. And I give the floor to you uh, to introduce uh, the High Simux Rail Simulation Suite. Uh, Mehmet, it's your floor. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Lutz. Uh, uh, OK, before starting, actually, uh, I'd like to express uh, my uh, deepest sorrow for those who have lost lives in recent earthquakes in Turkey. Uh, and uh, also, I'd like to express my condolences to all friends, uh, all relatives uh, who, uh, who have lost uh, their lives. Uh, actually, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to start uh, by uh, introducing uh, our company a bit, and then I'll be talking about uh, simulations, especially railway simulations, and how we can use them uh, to our benefit. Uh, Mehmet, you are unmuted. Please uh, mute. Uh, uh, you are muted. Please uh, unmute. All right. I'm sorry. How I yeah. don't know how it, it happened. Uh, uh, so we are a small company actually established in Technopolis area of Istanbul Technical University, uh, founded by two persons actually. Uh, one of them is me, and the other is Dr. Süleyman Açıkbaş. Uh, and we have been working in railway industry more than 20 years. And uh, actually, we have been doing uh, several things that include stimulations and also uh, works on signaling uh, and so on uh, in railways. Uh, I am I, at the same time a member of uh, control engineering uh, department of the Technical University uh, and also working in uh, disaster management. Uh, the organizers kindly of asked me to mention uh, a few uh, ideas about uh, multidisciplinary aspects of railway engineering and how to interconnect things. Uh, actually, probably many of our attendants would be aware of this, but uh, just to mention that uh, I'm working in uh, different areas such as control engineering and in, uh, speci specialized in robust control, uh, uh, where uh, this is considered to be quite a th theoretical area and uh, you try to find out controllers for which uh, you consider the uh, worst case, uh, even in the worst case, uh, the system should work. Uh, so th that's the one area that I work in. Uh, and another area I work in is uh, disaster management uh, and uh, mainly what uh, the, the essence of disaster management is risk management. Uh, and when you get into railway uh, systems, uh, obviously there are many things, it's a multidisciplinary area and you do many things in railway systems, but one of the most important things that you do in railways is uh, actually risk management. Uh, and when you consider, uh, although these 
three areas seem to be quite different uh, and uh, unrelevant. Uh, uh, they are actually very relevant, uh, especially uh, in the context of risk management. Uh, for example, uh, just seeing what has happened in the earthquakes in uh, Turkey, uh, I believe uh, in disaster management, uh, uh, railway engineers or people who are uh, who are uh, capable of re risk management in railways have uh, many interesting cont contributions, can have many interesting contributions to disaster management as well. Uh, so uh, this is just one area that I'd like to highlight, but uh, as you know, there are, there are many things uh, that, uh, that are common with uh, some other engineering uh, engineering areas. Uh, okay, I have already talked about myself, uh, and uh, I work in different areas, uh, uh, also working with Europe's Rail uh, as a member of scientific committee members, uh, uh, Europe's Rail joint undertaking. Uh, Please, please unmute your micro, please. I don't know why it happens. Yep. No, no, it's better. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, is it because of this? No. Uh, okay, anyway. Uh, okay, let me uh, continue with simulation studies. Uh, when you consider simulation studies, actually, uh, we have uh, several requirements as far as railways are concerned and simulation studies can help us in, in this aspect. Uh, one of the things that you have to consider is the safety aspect, uh, especially the kind of simulation studies we consider is relevant with uh, traction power simulations and the traction power simulations, uh, one of the important aspects is you, you need to determine rail potential and it has to be uh, actually uh, convenient. It has to be uh, actually confirming with uh, railway standards that includes EN 50122-1, which is related with railway potential, rail potential or touch potentials. Uh, so you need to you need to see uh, if uh, you have any problem uh, in in this aspect. Uh, also, in order to increase the performance uh, of a system or prove the performance of a given system, uh, you need to you need to uh, do simulations uh, in normal mode or in degraded modes. Uh, you need to see if the system would work as you wish it to work. Uh, and by the help of simulations, uh, before building. Uh, the railway or before making any uh, important change in a railway, you, you can actually see the results uh, and that can help you to save a lot of money, money in, in terms of capex or uh, opex, uh, operational expenditures or uh, initial uh, capital expenditures. Uh, Okay, uh, when actually we started uh, to do simulations more than 20 years ago, uh, we uh, started and uh, thought about what are the good properties of a simulation tool. And uh, we have found out that th there are six axes, six main important points that a simulation tool need to satisfy so that it is somewhat meaningful. Uh, the first Properties without that is correctness. The simulation results should reflect the real system should be as correct as possible. The results. Uh, the second aspect is uh, fastness. The results should be as fast as possible because when you are in uh, railway simulations, it is possible that uh, some of the simulations may take uh, hours or even days or even weeks if if uh, your uh, simulation tool is not fast enough, uh, and uh, this would be quite uh, difficult. This would make life quite difficult for any designer. 
flexibility is another important point because you need to be make changes as quickly as possible. Uh, and uh, this is actually hand in hand, hand with interaction because uh, you, you need to have a powerful and easy to use interface. Uh, usually there are hundreds, uh, if not thousands of parameters in uh, you, you can change in a railway simulation. Uh, and uh, you should be able to do this uh, correctly and swiftly uh, in order to have an efficient simulation model. Uh, standardization is uh, another important aspect and the program or the tool should be uh, obviously obeying standards that includes software standards as well as railway standards. Uh, and also report generation uh, is an important property of a simulation tool. Uh, so you need to see the results as efficiently as possible uh, because, as I said, there are hundreds uh, or thousands of parameters uh, and some of them could be important for you, some of them perhaps not so much important for you. So uh, the important ones should be highlighted and should be shown to you as quickly as possible and only when needed, the unimportant ones can be developed in. Uh, Okay, so uh, with all these thoughts, actually, uh, we, we have built a, a simulation tool. Uh, although the company, uh, uh, Hysim company, uh, started in 2016, actually, we started to develop uh, our simulation tool uh, more than 20 years ago, uh, and now it has become a simulator uh, suite uh, called Hysimix. Uh, so, uh, the company is uh, established in the Ara Technokent building of Istanbul Technical University. And uh, we have been involved in many projects and in many academic works as well. Uh, so, when you look at the main features of this simulation suite, uh, in addition to these six important criteria uh, that uh, I have already counted, uh, there are some interesting parts as well. One interesting and important point is the cloud server connection. Uh, so, uh, actually, our model uh, allows you to have a simulation in, on a local computer, so you can only run one simulation. But also, it is possible to have a simul uh, the simulation tool as a in server mode, and then we, you can have many servers around the globe, so it, it will be like a cloud server uh, type. And then we, we also have client applications, and these client applications uh, are actually uh, are given as a de as de desktop applications. Also, we have some. Uh, simple interfaces uh, that are suitable for uh, even uh, tablet or uh, phone, uh, uh, mobile phones. Uh, but uh, obviously the main application is the desktop application. So you can use the desktop applications to prepare your simulation and then uh, ask that simulation to be run. And if any server is available, your simulation will be run. Uh, so th this is quite a flexible uh, architecture, actually, uh, and it allows us to have multiple simulation runs at the same time. So in the same machine, we can have uh, multiple simulations running at the same time. And also, you can have several servers running multiple simulations at the same time. So if you have enough servers, enough computer power, you can, for example, run let's say 100 simulations at the same time. So there is no, no limit here. Uh, so another uh, important uh, part of this thing is that the uh, user-friendly intuitive uh, uh, user interface, uh, as we are both using the, the program and also developing the program, we know what is needed and we can develop it quite quickly. So that, that's uh, uh, one of the most powerful sites of the suite. Uh, also, uh, we can do operation and power simulations at the same time. So that's uh, a unique uh, characteristic of the 
uh, tool, uh, usually you have either operation simulations or traction power simulations separately. So we can do them separately, but if we wish, we can do them simultaneously at the same time. And uh, anybody who is interested in uh, such simulations will know that actually it is uh, they are affecting each other. So they are actually coupled to the operation simulations um, and uh, traction power simulations. Uh, just uh, to give you an example, uh, recently we have been asked uh, a, a speed, uh, high speed uh, uh, metro line uh, in Turkey. Uh, and we have been asked to investigate uh, different options that include 25 kilovolt AC, uh, 1,500 volt DC, and 3,000 uh, volt DC uh, uh, possibilities with 75 kilometer of line. And uh, actually, we were able to uh, get the first results within uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, and uh again anybody who is interested in simulation works would understand that this is quite fast uh, for a uh, let's say 25 kilometer heavy metro line we can uh, get the results in uh, in days but not in weeks actually uh actually Lutz already mentioned about the stars project and uh in stars project there are some advanced technologies involved. Uh, so you can see them uh, listed in this slide. And uh, especially our simulation suite and uh, in high, high sim, uh, we are more interested in or more involved in uh, the ones that are highlighted uh, in this uh, slide. Uh, I have already mentioned cloud computing. Uh, that's what we are doing. And obviously, we are uh, in mobility. Uh, Actually, it's not only railways. Uh, we can do simulations on uh, almost any kind of uh, uh, similar networks, uh, such as uh, uh, trolley buses or e-buses. Uh, actually, uh, at the end of my presentation, I'll try to share you with you uh, uh, results of a project uh, that is related with e-buses. Uh, artificial intelligence, we, we, uh, we sometimes use artificial intelligence in uh, production of our reports or in optimization. So it's uh, not, uh, we are not directly using it in simulations, but we are using artificial intelligence, intelligence uh, as, uh, in helping us, in, uh, in supporting us in different aspects. Okay, I'd like to... Uh, say uh, uh, give some more details on mountain simulation uh, uh, runs because uh, I may, I have already told you that we can run many simulations uh, at the same time so we can handle uh, several simulations at the same time so that's uh, quite powerful actually uh, and helps us a lot in managing projects so uh, here you can see that we, we are running several uh, scenarios of a single project at the same time uh, and then uh, we can we can get the results and after getting the results actually we can see for example uh, what is the maximum rail voltage or what is the minimum train voltage for each scenario we consider. So you can see that here we have different scenarios so the, these are the results of different simulations and for each simulation uh, the tool actually automatically finds uh, the worst case values and then among these worst case values we can see the worst of worst uh, case uh, in a in a way uh, so that we can quickly determine uh, whether a given uh, setup whether a given system is conforming with the standards or not uh, in this particular example, for example, we can see that minimum train voltage is, uh, this is for a 1,500 volt DC system, is within the limits of given by the standard as the uh, train voltages are all above 1,000 volt. But however, when you look at the maximum rail voltages, uh, we have uh, a problem here uh, because 
the maximum rail voltage is above 160 volt, which is an important threshold uh, given uh, in the uh, relevant standard. However, the standard does not only give you uh, the thresholds, but also give you uh, the number of seconds uh, for which you are allowed to uh, be uh, above the threshold. So, for example, in this particular case, we, we do not only see that uh, the 160 volt threshold is uh, violated, but also we see that how many seconds, and it's only 0.7 seconds, uh, which tells us that uh, this is in the limit, because the standard tells uh, us that uh, you can be above 160 volt less than one second. So. Uh, as you can see, we can see such details by just one look at a table, and, and these tables are automatically created uh, from a database, so that, that's uh, quite powerful uh, in this uh, resp respect. Uh, okay, uh, I have already talked about the importance of the friendly intuitive uh, uh, part of the uh, software. So we can we can do many things in uh, in this aspect. Uh, for example, we can see the trains as moving objects, and actually this is uh, in two ways. We can see uh, on uh, as the simulation is running. So we have an interface for this. As the simulation running, we can see how the trains are moving and what's happening uh, on the fly. And also after a simulation finishes. Uh, we can record everything and then play all the simulations step by step, or it's like a uh, record player. So you can you can you can see whatever you wish uh, after after the simulation as well. Uh, and uh, it has uh, it has conformity with uh, many other programs such as Excel, MATLAB, Mathematica. So you, so you can import data, export data from all these environments uh, without any problem. Uh, so, and we use libraries and so on to make our life easy. Uh, the measurements and validation, uh, we have many site measurements to show that uh, our results are true. So uh, we have several uh, validation reports for this. Uh, and also, the uh, software itself is validated uh, as per EN 506 power 1 uh, standard. Uh, and uh, the standard is about how to show uh, that the, the, the results of the software is actually correct. Uh, the, uh, we, have, we have been working with many companies around the globe. Uh, in Turkey, we have been working with uh, companies, uh, the engineering companies, as well as civil engineering companies or uh, uh, or the operating companies. Uh, so uh, here are some of the uh, companies that we work with. Uh, and we have done uh, more than 100 projects. Uh, uh, most of them are in Turkey, but also we have uh, projects. Uh, we have finished projects in Morocco, Azerbaijan, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore. Uh, I have told you that we that one of the interesting parts of the uh, software tool is that we can do operational simulations and power simulations or traction power simulations at the same time. Uh, we call operation simulations shortly as OPSIM, and we call traction power simulations as PowerSIM, and then we have both capabilities uh, uh, simultaneously. So uh, let me uh, briefly, uh, briefly give you some ideas about this. So for OPSIM, we can uh, uh, have uh, train runtime and power demand calculations, headway analysis, uh, train route or timetable optimization uh, or train injection from depot, withdrawal from depot, such scenarios we can examine. Uh, or we can uh, examine single track operations uh, as well. Uh, 
so uh, here you can see an animation uh, about our uh, tool. This, this is an interface uh, where the simulation is actually running. Uh, this is an operational simulation. Uh, but it is also possible that we can have traction power simulation at the same time. Uh, and as you can see in, in this basic simulation, uh, we have just tested whether the trains can turn back at the end of a line uh, in uh, using double berthing uh, without any problems. And I believe the headway was 90 seconds in this particular example. Uh, while doing this, simulations, uh, the train movement simulations at the uh, back uh, are very realistic, actually. We, we, we use uh, the CBTC rules, uh, actually given by IEEE standards, uh, 1474. Uh, and then, uh, for example, we uh, have a safe braking model. Uh, and the safe braking model actually helps us to determine the deceleration rate of uh, the vehicles. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, so here uh, we have uh, two scenarios, but in one scenario, which is given in uh, blue, uh, the gradient is 4% uphill, and uh, the scenario given in red, is we have 4% gradient downhill. So when you have uh, when the gradient is uphill, you can see that the uh, vehicle starts decelerating uh, late because uh, of the uphill. Uh, here we have velocity in the vertical axis and time in the horizontal axis. Uh, whereas uh, when uh, the train is going downhill, it has to start decelerating uh, much earlier due to standards, uh, the safe braking model, and then the journey time would increase. So uh, such details will be actually considered, uh, are considered actually uh, in the in the uh, simulation tool. Uh, and uh, not only this, uh, actually, we, we also work with ERTMS models, etc., uh, to to have a complete package. Uh, all right, so uh, we can do fixed block or moving block operations, so that's not a big problem for us. Uh, and we can do uh, different signaling scenarios uh, for normal operation, degraded mode cases, and so on. Uh, so this is yet another example uh, where actually uh, both Operation simulation and at the same time, traction power simulation is uh, working simultaneously, uh, where we see a scenario uh, in which we are taking uh, trains out of a depot. Okay, so you can see that this is considered to be in winter conditions. So trains are uh, starting to warm up before put, uh, before they are put into the service. So you can see that there is a 300 kilowatt uh, auxiliary power usage by the trains who have woken up. And uh, the trains who are sleeping uh, are just only take, uh, withdrawing 10 kilowatts. And as their uh, uh, order comes, the trains are withdrawn from the depot one by one. And then uh, we, we can see that they, they can seriously get into the uh, area, in the main line. And at the same time, we can see all the power demands uh, from the uh, traction power uh, substations or, and also all kinds of currents, powers, voltages on, in all cables uh, in the area. So that's uh, quite uh, effective in this sense. Uh, so we can, as I have already told you, we can determine the minimum turn back, uh, turn back headway and so on uh, using uh, double berthing or uh, single berthing. Uh, so these are all possible uh, things for us. Uh, we can use uh, uh, power simulations uh, or power sim in different ways uh, in addition to uh, op sim. So uh, we can 
assess energy saving strategies uh, and assess also the uh, usability or uh, uh, if uh, the uh, systems related with uh, traction power uh, are adequate or not. So we can check the adequacy of all equipments uh, relevant. Uh, see regenerative energy usage uh, and see inverters, uh, energy storage devices, and all these things, uh, and energy consumption results. So we can uh, assess railway potential or straight current calculations. Uh, we can we can do short circuit calculations or control the relay settings. Uh, th there are many uh, things that you need to put as an input in such simulations. Uh, there is a list here, but I'm not going to go through all of them because of time limitations. Uh, so uh, you can see some of the results here. So we can have uh, detailed trip times, uh, speed graphs, power demand graphs, uh, etc. All given in uh, detail, actually, uh, or as much detail as you wish to be more correct. Uh, so uh, here we have some uh, examples about our simulation outputs. So we can see uh, we actually before starting the simulation, we select which data we are interested in. So they are all logged. Uh, all those data are logged uh, in. Uh, and then after the simulation or during the simulation, we can actually see how these data uh, or these variables are changing. Uh, and we can do simple operations on this, such as, uh, for example, uh, taking an RMS or uh, finding a moving average and so on. So all those things are done uh, in our tool, uh, incorporated swiftly in, in our, our, our toolbox. Uh, and also uh, we can see all the results uh, in graphics, it could be in single graphics or multiple graphics uh, without any problem. We can see, examine different things such as uh, for a given threshold, how many times the threshold is exceeded and uh, uh, some other details, statistical details about uh, the threshold. Uh, so uh, we can see the train graphs. Uh, so uh, the we have measurement uh, tools, so we can measure the vertical or horizontal axis values, uh, and then we can put them in uh, our reports without any problem. Uh, it's possible to provide uh, quite detailed timetables. So this is an example uh, actually from a main line in Turkey, uh, and then actually uh, this was a single track operated main line. So you can see that we have entered all the timetable for a day actually and then uh, simulated the trains and see uh, and reported the results so uh, such things are also possible but this is a, a project case study uh, and we have uh, actually in in this study you, you can see that uh, we have actually worked on this area uh, and uh, there was a preliminary study in which they have suggested uh, seven new power substations for this line. And uh, after doing some optimizations, actually, with the help of simulations, we were able to suggest or say that uh, only four traction power substations is enough for this line. So uh, it, it just means that you save three po uh, traction power simulations located in these passenger stations. Uh, and uh, that means millions of uh, euros, actually, uh, in terms of uh, design. Uh, and also in the same study, we have uh, determined that, for example, that there was a, a condition uh, saying that if we lose the last two neighboring power substations, this one and this one, uh, the system should work with 300 second headway. Uh, and uh, we have seen that uh, in order to achieve this, actually you, you need to put some uh, 
extra wire that helps to rail uh, in order to prevent uh, railway potential problems. So such things can uh, be found by the help of simulation tools. Uh, so this is yet another example from uh, a project uh, where we have determined relay settings uh, in case of uh, short circuits, uh, a nearby short circuit or a long distance circuit to a given uh, traction power substation. Actually, the tool can calculate the currents, uh, the steady state currents. I should be correct uh, uh, here. The steady state currents that will flow through uh, the system. And then by the help of this, actually, we can help in finding the uh, relay set values in in uh, in the given given area for the power substations. Two additional minutes, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is uh, another uh, case study from uh, uh, electric bus rapid transit system. Uh, this is uh, quite a long system, uh, altogether 50 kilometer long. Uh, you can see only a part of it uh, where the train, uh, there will be a loop here. Uh, so here you see that in this part of the system, we have catenary. So the e-buses will charge their batteries. And then in this part, we don't have any uh, catenary. So e-buses will use their uh, batteries to continue their journey, journey and come here and then go back uh, to the catenary se section. So uh, the e-buses are 25 meter double articulated uh, buses and uh, they are equipped with DC-DC converters, uh, battery packs and so on. Uh, and uh, the ultimate uh, operation request is uh, having uh, a headway less than 20 seconds. So it's quite uh, demanding, as you can see, uh, and uh, you can see, or you can also see that the uh, stations are quite long, so it's possible to have more than one uh, buses in the same station at the same time. So the simulation tool can handle such things. And then uh, in the background, you can see that these are from the simulation tool as well. We can we can follow all power flows as the simulation runs. So here. For example, this is a catenary area and uh, the motors demand 400 kilowatt power. So uh, from uh, uh, the catenary, we have only uh, 350 kilowatt and also auxiliary requires 30 kilowatt. So uh, the, since we have enough power, uh, the state of charge of the battery is good. Uh, 80 kilowatt comes from the uh, battery. However, if the state of the charge of the battery is low, then instead of uh, using the power for motors, it is possible to di divert this to the uh, batteries. So th this is such a situation. Uh, or uh, uh, it is possible that uh, the uh, when the bus actually decelerates, it can create some energy, so this energy can be used in auxiliary uh, if ESD is full, and uh, if you cannot put it, uh, put this energy to catenary, then uh, you can uh, burn it in resistors. Uh, or in this scenario, it is possible to charge the battery uh, with this uh, regenerative power. So all these scenarios and more actually. Uh, can be can be actually simulated, and as uh, as long as we have the rules, we can we can simulate them, uh, and you can have many different interesting rules in, in such uh, simulations. So uh, this is uh, the result of uh, buses going from the catenary section, with, which is colored, and then getting into the section without catenary. So there, the state of the charge is decreasing. And when the uh, bus comes back to the catenary section, the state of the charge is increasing again. And in this simple uh, simulation, for example, we have shown that if we have only two kilometer catenary section, it's not enough to have a continuous operation. 
So for continuous operation, we recommended five kilometer catenary where the buses finish with a state of charge greater than the initial state of the charge uh, at the end of the loop. Uh, so this is yet another uh, example where we have shown we have helped traction system optim optimization uh, with train traction package. So for different train traction package options, we are actually able to uh, uh, see the results, see the differences, and then uh, provide the optimum uh, tra train traction package, which is quite important uh, actually, and perhaps deserves uh, another, uh, another uh, presentation. Uh, and this is another uh, project case study may, where we have may shown. I ask you to come to an end, please. Yes, just uh, last two or three slides. So let me let me finish. Uh, sorry, for uh, being so long. Uh, so this is yet yet another one uh, where we have shown uh, the echo driving. We have uh, examined echo driving uh, scenarios and then shown uh, uh, that actually using, for example, costing strategy is much more effective than other uh, proposed uh, strategies. OK, uh, anyway, uh, I'm sorry that I was a bit longer than planned, uh, but uh, this is the end of my presentation. Uh, so uh, I will be glad if you if you Contact me or my partners uh, through email, so you can see the emails on the slide. So thank you very much for listening to me and joining us today. Uh, thank you, Mehmet, for uh, having this uh, huge presentation uh, and a good presentation. Uh, I have here one question uh, from the chat. Uh, I'm and uh, one of the participants is using uh, OHE for traction power. Can uh, we simulate traction uh, return current if I feed input as low insulation in particular track section? I want to know what will be the leakage uh, in that section. Could you answer uh, the question? OK, well, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sh sure about o uh, what OHE stands for. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the yeah, can the can the uh, uh, the uh, can you uh, please open your mic uh, and uh, uh, describe what uh, OHE means? Uh, overhead electrification. Uh, I you mean that uh, the uh, only the ca the electrification in the catenary. Uh, uh, if that is the question, we, we are simulating using a multi-conductor model, so we we, uh, we we can see we can see all the currents that are available all in catenary and also in rails, the return currents as well, uh, and we can also see all the stray currents, uh, so we can we can see leakages uh, in detail. So we can make a, a whole day scenario, for example, and see. Uh, what would be the leakage current? So that's possible with our simulation tool. All right. Uh, there was uh, one uh, another question. I will uh, I will show you. Uh, it is uh, will be the last question uh, for the moment, um, uh, and it is about uh, a certification. What does uh, EN uh, 56401 certification okay. mean exactly? OK, thank you. Uh, actually, EN 54641 is a recent uh, uh, recent standard or uh, uh, that is given by European Union and it has been very uh, it has they have been working on this for nearly 10 years uh, to have a standard. This is a particular standard for such simulation tools uh, to test whether the results of uh, a traction power simulation tool is uh, good enough. Um, so that that's the ba uh, that's the basic uh, t test actually, and uh, actually uh, you you can uh, you can use this standard to see if your tool is obeying uh, at least uh, in the basic level uh, it's uh, it's providing uh, correct results. 
uh, and actually we have uh, taken a certification on this uh, to, to show that uh, our results are obeying with this standard. In the standard, there are several test cases. Actually, they give you uh, a simulation scenario and you run your simulation and at the end, they check uh, more than 100 data points. And uh, 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 our simulation tool uh, actually is uh, given uh, because also they give you the expected results and possible uh, error margins. Uh, and the tool uh, that we use are actually uh, is either at the spot or very near to the given uh, expected results. So well within the error ma margins. Yeah. Very uh, last question. Very last question uh, for this uh, session, referring to the energy drain uh, by the overhead contact line, uh, com uh, comparative data available between uh, the simulation outcomes and the data obtained from trains equipped on board with energy measuring systems compliant with EN fifty four six three series. Please. Uh, all right. Answer, please. Actually, we have we have uh, several site measurements. And our site measurements show that uh, the results we have, especially related with the energy uh, and also for other parameters, are uh, uh, almost exactly matching with the real world results. So uh, we have done this in uh, different areas that includes main lines uh, and uh, also in uh, urban lines. All right. So thank you for uh, describing that, for answering all the questions. Uh, I will hand over to my colleague Guido from uh, the Italian uh, Railway Cluster DTEC Fair to introduce uh, the second presenter. Okay, thank you. Yes, good morning, everybody. I'm uh, very glad uh, to uh, introduce engineer Alessandro Mellone. He is a solution consultant as Engine Soft. He will be the second speaker. He holds a degree in aerospace engineering as uh, he has over six years of experience in simulation. His area of interest include the structural analysis, multiphysic application, and expertise in composite uh, modeling. In addition, he follows activities related to system engineering, functional safety, and SPDM, which I, we have learned it means simulation process and data management. Please, Alessandro, the floor is yours for your presentation. Thank you. Good morning. Are you hearing me? Yes. Okay. okay. I want to share my screen. Can you share? Screen share. Perfect. OK, good morning uh, again and thanks uh, for the introduction, Guido. Uh, thank you for uh, giving this opportunity to EngineSoft. Uh, thank you for attending this session covering simulation suite uh, using your rail system in design activities. Uh, here, uh, a brief agenda of this session. I will start with an introduction about EngineSoft, uh, my company. Then uh, we'll go deep uh, and I will explain in brief how the simulation and the simulation suite uh, can help the day by day uh, work of engineers uh, of the railway sector. Then uh, we will analyze um, some examples uh, coming from our experience. So, okay, uh, let's start with the engine soft introduction. Uh, EngineSoft has a core business, uh, uh, the simulation based engineering and science. We are able to create uh, robust and accurate and reliable solution models, simulation models, and uh, we also have tools for simulation process and data management. Uh, founded in 1984, EngineSoft uh, has a very strong history with several uh, satisfied clients and industrial, pro industrial projects. Um, we help customers to innovate and uh, maximize their return of investment, uh, implementing simulations in their design process with software, with dedicated training and training courses and simulation activities. Um, at the same time, and uh, as we will see in the next slides, uh, EngineSoft uh, is also strongly involved uh, in uh, R&D projects. Okay. 
Um, Engine Soft is an Italian company with a global presence. So we have offices in France, UK, Germany, Turkey, but also in the USA. Uh, now, uh, in Italy, there are six uh, offices, and uh, I'm speaking from the Engine Soft Mesan in the south of Italy. Uh, in this slide, uh, we have uh, just an overview of our solution. Um, our main platform is the ANSYS One with uh, its portfolio. Uh, and at the same time, we have several software that can be considered the state of the art of the simulation tool in their fields. Um, we are able also to provide HPC uh, infrastructure and uh, an integrated technical support both for tools, software and uh, infrastructures. Um, our strength um, is the ability to transfer uh, skills between sectors. So we are able to cover the main ones uh, and among the, this, the rail sector. Uh, among our main customers, uh, some uh, are in your sector and uh, engine soft technicians are graduated in, in uh, um, different disciplines uh, from mathematics to engineering, from physics to software science. So we are able to approach problems uh, from uh, different point of view and transfer uh, know-how uh, between sectors. As I said before, um, Engine Soft uh, is strongly involved in uh, several R&D projects. Here you can see our numbers. <clears throat> Uh, even in the research, uh, we cover all the sector, uh, and uh, in our opinion, <coughs> research projects uh, are a fertile ground where we can cultivate the ideas of implementation of solution. Um, as our founder says, Professor Stefano Dorizzi, innovation without research is impossible. Um, in addition to industrial research, we also uh, we are also very active in co-founded research. And uh, as you can see from the central graph, most of the projects are European, then follow national and regional ones. Uh, over there here, we have developed more than 90 research projects and uh, we have created a network with more than 850 partners. And uh, over here, uh, we are able to write between 20 and 30 uh, design proposal with uh, a, a night rate of uh, uh, passive projects. Uh, in this slide, just a glimpse of our presence at the European and national level. Uh, Engine Soft uh, is actively, uh, actively participates in numerous uh, European research organizations, including the European factories of the Future Research uh, Association, Association uh, the European Materials Model Council, the European Platform for HPC, High Performance Computing, and the European Institute of Innovation and Technology for Raw Materials and Manufacturing. Uh, Engine Soft is a founding member, for example, of the Apulian Aerospace Technological District and a member of DTECFER in Italy. Uh, here highlighted in, uh, uh, in red. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we are a member of the National Agency for the Promotion of European Research, which allow us to uh, keep up to date with the research developments in Europe. Um, we get all this uh, thanks to a dedicated team of uh, seven professionals uh, for monitoring and scouting of co-founded projects, uh, support new proposal drafting and submission, uh, planning and operation of running projects, coordination and management of uh, R&D projects, and uh, uh, we are able uh, to um, build uh, a system for dissemination and exploitation of uh, uh, results. Um, so our contribution to R&D projects, as you can see from the uh, lowest part of these, uh, these slides, uh, is transversal like our skills. And uh, mm, I will give you a vision in the next part of the presentation of this. Okay, uh, and now an overview, a summary of how simulation suite, uh, suites uh, help the rail sector. Um, 
As we see in the Lutz slide of uh, Professor Wanz, uh, uh, STARS uh, is a project uh, with, uh, which addresses uh, all aspects uh, related to the uptake of advanced, uh, advanced technologies for uh, uh, the delivery of uh, rare value related innovation by small and medium enterprises. Um, simulation can approach most of the advanced technologies uh, and uh, in addition, it could be add more topics, uh, more technologies like uh, multi-physics simulation, optimization, functional safety, model-based system engineering. And at the same time, EngineSoft uh, is able to manage mod most of these technologies. But um, what are the common engineering challenges in the rail sector or in general in engineering. Uh, the challenges as related, uh, the challenges related to the design in the rail sector are countless. Following the full cycle of the product development, uh, you can meet the need to uh, contract to shorten the time to market to manage the variance. Uh, to manage different operating scenarios and all these aspects are associated with the four other general pains, such as the management of the complexity of the system, the lack of traceability, the use of numerous documents, and often the redundant work. So the simulation comes in play, into play right here. Uh, Simulation-based engineering and science so, are essential disciplines for digital transformation. With simulation, you can switch from pains to benefit. For example, uh, you can understand better your system and its behavior. You can trace the work with uh, standardized workflows. You can easily share the knowledge uh, in your company, gaining also a better clarity in your project uh, without more and more documents. And uh, at the same time, you can improve communication and teamwork. So, uh, Engine Soft uh, is a testimonial of these uh, uh, benefits. In addition to managing common pain, the simulation on the entire product development cycle helps to reduce cost and the development time, improving quality, uh, quality product quality. So another advantage of the pervasive simulation is the possibility of minimizing the need of physical prototypes, spotting in the coming uh, uh, years. So um, digital transformation leads the uh, zero physical prototype uh, approach uh, in, the, in this sense. And uh, in these slides, uh, we have the outcomes of simulation. So um, engineers can see how their design will or won't behave in millions of real world scenarios while reducing or even eliminating the need of costly uh, physical testing, um, as I said before. So the main outcomes from simulation are a new way for digital transformation, risk prediction and mitigation, and increased efficiency and productivity. And all these aspects are fully linked with the previous presentation and by the professor. Um, simulations uh, boost safety, performance, operation and maintenance. And for example, the um, digital twin, the most advanced expression of the simulations, is a general topic that merge these aspects altogether. But how can uh, I reach the outcomes? Uh, here are the key capabilities to enable the creation of a connected digital thread. Uh, these capabilities amplify the benefit of simulation tool thanks to workflow automation and management, design space uh, exploration and optimization, simulation data and materials data management, connectivity with model-based system engineering platform like uh, um, Magic Draw Cameo, IBM Rhapsody, and so on. So this capability uh, allow you to increase collaboration, productivity, and innovation. Um, after this general part, uh, on how simulation uh, suites at, at the design, I decided to prepare some application examples about simulation in the rail sector. 
Uh, this should give you a better understanding uh, of the potentialities of the simulation. Please, for each slide, uh, take a look on the top right uh, side of the slides, uh, where I added a reminder regarding the advanced technologies involved with the, um, in the STAR projects. Um, considering our history, it was uh, uh, it was very hard to summarize our experience and now in few slides. Uh, these examples are just a portion of our know-how and our simulation can help you. So in the next day, days, don't hesitate or, uh, to write um, to obtain more information about how engine soft and simulation could help you. OK, uh, the first example uh, I selected are related to fire simulation. Security is one of the main pain in the rail sector, but uh, we have also multi-physics approach in fire safety engineering. Uh, so simulation tools uh, can help you to simulate fire propagation, for example, or uh, people evacuation and degrees, extinguishment uh, by water mist. And for example, you have the possibility to simulate the full coach uh, in a tunnel or a portion of it. And uh, uh, in this little slide, uh, you can see a risk assessment related to fire simulation. In a first step, uh, we performed a thermal analysis in order to identify critical areas. Uh, and then uh, we define the effect on some of some debris. Um, the structure analyzed was a roof of a metro coach, for example. So in this case, uh, the tool used were uh, ANSYS Mechanical and uh, FDS, Fire Dynamic Simulator, uh, an open source tool for uh, um, fire simulation. OK. Um, in this slide, I want to uh, uh, show you uh, another advanced technologies uh, involved, uh, in particular functional safety and cybersecurity. Uh, for this example, uh, a dedicated tool named ANSYS Medini has been used to validate the CBTC uh, class automation train control system safety under all operating conditions. And uh, uh, Medini has been used to, for safety case documentation and analysis according to the railway safety standard. Um, so uh, the, mm, the tool is based on the model-based system engineering, in particular model-based uh, safety analysis. So um, it's possible to use a model uh, to uh, analyze all the safety cases. OK, um, in this activity related to high speed train optimization, we developed uh, uh, a design methodology uh, that we transferred in other similar applications. So uh, the main advanced technologies involved are advanced materials for the uh, design of the coach and uh, multi-physics simulation and uh, optimization. So the, the philosophy was to combine uh, a design process uh, with an innovative approach in order to optimize reliability, safety, and uh, low power consumption. <clears throat> so uh, starting from uh, a CAD model of the regional configuration, uh, we uh, build a parametric FA model and we uh, integrated it uh, in uh, an MDO platform, multidisciplinary optimization platform. Uh, so we create uh, a workflow in order to uh, reduce the weight, to optimize the, 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 the design, considering also uh, manufacturing constraint, and uh, um, we uh, build the workflow um, considering the possibility to reuse it uh, in other activities. And uh, as we can see <coughs> in, uh, in this slide, uh, we use the same workflow, but with different uh, uh, FA model, obviously, uh, to um, analyze the Metro Nolulu and the Caravaggio HF train. Um, both of these activities uh, add the weight reduction uh, uh, as the main uh, um, target. 
Another application of simulation, uh, in particular multiphysics and optimization, is the uh, CFD. So in this case, uh, we had developed a design methodology, uh, again, uh, to create a virtual uh, climatic tunnel in order to reproduce the real scenario. Uh, so uh, with this simulation, uh, we obtain an error uh, about 3% uh, if compared with the uh, experimental data. Uh, the thermal comfort uh, was predicted very accurately, and uh, we optimized also the energy consumption. So the CFD simulation helped us to uh, obtain uh, all uh, um, objectives. Uh, in this case, the tool uh, uh, was the ANSYS platform, so uh, in particular affluent. Um, again, the methodology uh, was reused uh, to design the TAF Morocco uh, in order to obtain a new optimized air distribution and extraction system. As we can see in the uh, advanced technology involved in the STARS project, uh, another topic uh, are the advanced materials. Uh, we have a tool uh, named Granta that helps the design and design of rail components uh, um, managing uh, material data, not only from the point of view of mechanical properties, but also of compliance with the regulation, for example, uh, um, certification uh, related to green mobility and so on. Uh, so in this case, the tool was used to identify the best composite materials to be used for the design of the carriage floor, the, 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 the train floor, sorry, uh, replacing the aluminum. Um, sandwich panels allowed to reduce materials cost and mass. Um, and uh, we improved uh, shear performance uh, and uh, overcome uh, uh, possible uh, problems with the durability and flammability. <clears throat> and uh, the last example uh, provides an overview uh, for the study by exploiting the multi physics approach. In this case, uh, electromagnetic, thermal, and fluid dynamic simulation have been performed to study the behavior of an electric motor. So the integrated approach made it possible to achieve a very good uh, results in terms of expected temperature. Um, and uh, we use a parametric, uh, also in this case, a parametric model in order to obtain um, an optimized design, design uh, for the motor, uh, reducing uh, the cost of prototypes. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, um, the example would be many. Uh, the simulation can pervade uh, the whole sector and the design process. And this slide uh, is a non-exhaustive synthesis of the main application of uh, simulation in the uh, uh, rail sector. Um, so please uh, see it uh, as a starting point uh, for further uh, reflection on all advanced technologies in STARS and non. As I said, uh, uh, thanks to our background uh, coming from other sectors, for example, aerospace, uh, we are ready to support most of the STARS advanced technologies. So, uh, before dedicating time to questions, I would like to thank you again for uh, your kind attention. And here uh, you have the uh, engine software references. You can write to me, to Francesco, head of the uh, simulation process data management team and uh, our representative at DTEC firm, uh, or to uh, Nicola Gramegna, uh, manager in the R&D uh, group. So thanks again. So, uh, Alessandro, thank you very much for your uh, good presentation. Uh, uh, maybe Guido, you will uh, lead to the uh, Q and answer session, or should I? Uh, as you want. <laughs>
<laughs> Start, please. Yeah, there are. So, yeah. uh, there are uh, at least uh, three questions for the time being. The first is uh, Alessandro, in your opinion, and based on engine soft point of view, what is the trend of simulation in the coming years for the railway sector? Thank you. Uh, thanks for the question. This is a really good uh, uh, question. Uh, what we are seeing starting about three, four years ago is an exponential growth of uh, uh, in the simulation simulation usage. Uh, we see this from the results we are able to achieve, uh, both from uh, uh, the point of view of the software, uh, but also from the consultancy activities. Uh, we see this growth in all sector uh, without distinction. And uh, obviously, uh, more advanced sectors uh, such as aerospace, automotive, and rail uh, allow you to um, take the uh, issues with more stringent uh, simulation. Uh, today, in this sector, um, we talk about digital twin, for example, as I said, uh, automation, model based safety engineering. Uh, and model-based system engineering. All these uh, issues require a strong use of simulation uh, in order to achieve performance and market uh, objectives. So th this is an overview of our uh, vision uh, about simulation uh, in the next year. OK, uh, next question concern uh, uh, the support that you can give in the railway sector, even if we have already seen that in one of your last uh, slides, you introduced the fact that you are open to a lot of uh, sub part of uh, of a railway uh, railway environment, mainly on uh, rolling stock, but also on uh, infrastructure, maybe, or uh, or not. Um, both of them. Uh, EngineSoft is ready to support the rail sector, both with uh, uh, R&D projects uh, um, for those wishing to push simulation for new horizons, for example, or but also with, um, for those wishing to approach the simulation for the first time. Um, thanks to other research projects, uh, we have a strong background on automation and digital twin uh, for predictive maintenance, uh, virtual prototyping, uh, virtual commissioning, and so on. So uh, at the same time, we are already working uh, in the industrial field uh, on the team, the model based uh, system engineering through structured workflow uh, that allow us to connect the world of requirements in system with the world of uh, um, detailed engineering. Uh, regarding our uh, um, last question uh, about uh, money saving, um, the, 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 it's a good question. Uh, saving uh, are related to the, the system. Uh, so uh, if we have a big system uh, through simulation, we have uh, uh, a very, very huge saving in terms of uh, <clears throat> heroes because, for example, we, we avoid uh, all uh, prototypes. Uh, we can use the simulation to uh, make virtual prototype of all system. And uh, at the end, uh, we have the possibility to test only the last design and non, uh, not uh, all uh, uh, possibility. So, um, in my opinion, in a soft opinion, uh, if the, the, the system, uh, the, the complexity of the system, um, give an understanding of how simulation uh, can help to save EOS. Thank you very much. Thank you um, again. Lutz, are there other questions in the chat? No, there are no other questions in the chat. Maybe uh, there is an additional question. Uh, then uh, don't be shy to open your mic uh, row and uh, uh, ask uh, our presenter directly. So that seems not to be the case for the moment, uh, but for sure you will every time have the chance uh, to uh, to uh, uh, contact uh, all presenters. 
But uh, there is uh, one additional question uh, coming from the chat. Uh, it's the last one uh, referring functional safety and cybersecurity in railway applications. Are any examples available? Last question to Alessandro. Sorry, uh, I don't <laughs> referring functional safety and cybersecurity in railway applications. Are there any examples available? Um, yes, we we have the other example uh, also uh, working with the ANSYS. Uh, who developed the, the, the tool. So um, we have di different examples in uh, uh, different sectors. Um, for the moment, we have only one in the, um, uh, in the rail one, uh, but uh, the, the tool uh, gives you the possibility to um, create uh, the simulation based on uh, your problem and uh, um, is compliant uh, it's compliant to uh, railway sector so uh, with this tool uh, you have the possibility to um, uh, create uh, a safety case uh, according to uh, standards so, uh, so uh, anyway uh, we can uh, uh, approach the problem uh, also with the ANSI support uh, the yeah. tool is new, so uh, there aren't uh, um, examples uh, in uh, in the rail. We have uh, most example uh, in automotive, for example, for uh, uh, other system or uh, in the aerospace uh, uh, and defense. Um, but uh, we can work with Densis to uh, try the the defined solution. As you can see, I'm just typing uh, some 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 more questions into the slide. Uh, have simulations have been uh, made uh, on the thermal behavior uh, of lithium battery packs for railway traction? Yes, we we have a tool for uh, uh, battery management system. Uh, uh, we we can approach uh, the design of this uh, system. Uh, a different level with the system modeling, uh, with the detailed modeling, so we can couple, um, for example, a CFD uh, analysis of the um, thermal management system with a 1D um, system uh, simulation. Um, we are able to uh, create uh, digital twin of this uh, uh, system, the battery pack uh, of rail uh, traction, and uh, uh, we have uh, different uh, use cases uh, on uh, uh, Twin Builder, uh, that is the um, NCS tool for uh, digital twin, uh, um, digital twin design. Yeah, and uh, the last one, the very last question, what kind of electromagnetic simulation tool is used for the FEM analysis and the traction motor design? Okay, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, also in this case, uh, we have uh, uh, several tools uh, for the um, uh, mechanical uh, point of view, we use ANSYS Mechanical. For the electromagnetic simulation tool, we have electronic desktop coming from uh, ANSYS again, and uh, we are able to couple uh, different uh, tools in the electronic desktop uh, with uh, ANSYS Mechanical. So uh, we have the full uh, suite to um, analyze a, a motor design, starting from, uh, uh, for example, MotorCAD to uh, Maxwell for uh, a detailed uh, design and ANSYS Mechanical for structural analysis, uh, Fluent CFX for uh, uh, fluid dynamics, and so on. So we have the full portfolio uh, to um, cover uh, the uh, simulation of, uh, mo of motors electric motors.
So thank you very much for this uh, presentation and uh, we will thank come to, uh, to the end of uh, our webinar, but uh, I have uh, maybe some useful hints uh, to you. Uh, first, uh, I kindly ask you to fill in the very small uh, feedback questionnaire. Uh, 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 the link is given uh, into the chat uh, on your feelings about the webinar, uh, on uh, suggestions for future topics. Uh, it would help us very much. Uh, I will uh, make some promotion for 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 two uh, B2B matchmaking uh, opportunities. Uh, the first is related uh, uh, for uh, 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 with a resilient uh, platform, supply chain platforms. Uh, it is uh, established by the Enterprise Europe Network with the support of the uh, uh, of uh, ERCI uh, and uh, uh, the same uh, uh, thing uh, as uh, for the SARS B2B matchmaking platform registration is free of charge. Uh, uh, you can uh, define your demands, your products, your services. Uh, uh, it is uh, not only the transport branch, but uh, uh, all other branches uh, 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 covered uh, with this platform, uh, but we have uh, already uh, 234 participants which are related to the transport sector. And second one is an upcoming event uh, end of March. Uh, it's a CIFA uh, uh, a trade fair show uh, in Lille in France. And uh, together with this uh, show, uh, the Enterprise Europe Network Out of France uh, uh, has been established. Uh, the CIFA B2B meetings uh, 2023, uh, also a platform where it is possible for uh, virtual and also physical meetings uh, at the CIFA. Yeah, please use also this uh, opportunity uh, in order to find a new uh, context uh, which might be interesting uh, for your business. So uh, last slide, uh, uh, we will uh, continue with uh, webinars, uh, with dedicated STARS webinars as well as with uh, uh, ERCI webinars. Uh, there will uh, some, uh, some, uh, some uh, opportunities uh, for sure, we have to organize uh, all uh, uh, of uh, them so that the registration links uh, will be available soon. Uh, the STARS webinars uh, are uh, 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 for sure connected with some certain advanced technologies, uh, uh, for instance, on digital twin, on cybersecurity, on 5G. And uh, the next uh, ERCI webinar uh, on the 22nd, nee, on the 23rd of March, it's not uh, not a Wednesday, it's a Thursday for the moment. Uh, it is uh, uh, on passenger safety and driver assistance. And uh, uh, we keep you informed uh, about these uh, opportunities uh, by sending you per, per mail uh, uh, the uh, information uh, around uh, the registration to the, these uh, webinars as soon as they are available. Um, Later on Friday, I think uh, I can send uh, all of you uh, the presentations and the recording uh, of that webinar uh, as usual uh, to be to be to be used uh, for 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 uh, getting in contact with the two presenters. Thank you again, uh, Mehmet, and thank you again, Alessandro, uh, for the uh, very good uh, presentations and very interesting ones. Uh, thank you, Guido, for for uh, uh, for uh, co-moderating this webinar, and thank you, Arif, uh, for for introducing uh, us uh, to Mehmet uh, and give uh, him the chance to introduce uh, uh, his uh, um, solution. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, see you soon at uh, one of the next uh, ESCI and or STARS webinars. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank again. you. Bye now.